So I I know that you um, you're very inspired by the work of Peter Mullen. Yes. And he's been sort of a mentor to you yes. for many years. Like, yeah. And um, how did you talk to him before you shot this? And oh my God! Did you ask him for advice? And what was his advice? I think. I don't actually have a memory of what happened mm -hmm. before I shot the film because uh -huh. probably I blocked it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I sent him the script for Good Dick or mm -hmm. not, and I'm not sure. I knew that I think he was aware that I was shooting a film. Mm -hmm. He was aware of that fact. Mm -hmm. um, but it was such an audacious move for me personally mm -hmm. that I don't think. I don't know, I don't think I can remember anything he said. Yeah. If he said anything, it was yeah. probably really nice. Yeah. But I just was like in such a sort of identity shift artistically that yeah. I don't know, I don't really I don't really remember. I do remember him seeing the film. Oh. Which was like really an incredible moment for me. You were with him when you saw it? Yeah, I showed him the rough cut of Good Dick, which was in just the December after we shot. Okay. I took it back to Scotland and I showed my mom and my friends, um, Sammy, Stephen, and Peter, uh -huh. and it was an hour and forty minutes at that point. Oh. Um, and I showed it to him like on my laptop, uh -huh. and I was like freaking out. I was like, "You're gonna watch it." He had to watch it with headphones. I was uh -huh. freaked out. <laughs> I like left him there for like an hour and forty minutes um, in my hotel room, and I just went away. And he watched it, and I came back. Uh -huh. um, and it was like, you know, I was so terrified. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm sure, yeah. I thought he was going to kill me. I, d I did not know. I mean, he's a nice man. There's yeah. no reason why I would think that. Yeah, but right. it's just that artistic thing of like, oh, I could, it could all be over. Right yeah, now. Like, yeah. I could just never get to do this again. Uh -huh. um, or, you know, something was going to have to be redefined. I don't know. Um, but he said it was a gem of a film. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which, when I heard those words, I was like, Oh my god, that was really like the end of something for me. Like it was like the his opinion was mm -hmm. you know and is so important to me that to get his feedback in a way that wasn't uh, a negative on the film. Uh, -huh. uh, uh like I can't explain it. It was so much. It was such a big deal. It was that was really like the first big epic shock of yeah. the movie. Yeah, mm. yeah. Peter Mullen likes it. Like oh my god, and that was before it was even what it became, which yeah. was an hour and a half, and mm -hmm. um, the hour and a half cut is the one that went to Sundance. Yeah. Peter had notes. He said that it was too long. Okay. He said that it wasn't War and Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but, that's, what do you mean? But it could it be? I was like, I know, but it is, sort of. And he was like, no. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was definitely an inspiration in every possible way. Yeah. He just always has been. And his films are so emotional. Mm -hmm. And he's such an emotional actor and mm -hmm. he's so real that I, I'm just going to be fascinated with him until yeah. I'm an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. I wanted to ask you about where I looked at it. Did you, um, how did you work with your composer, Jared? Jared? was and is such a genius musician and I asked a lot of him because you know he had to compose music for the porns he had to compose oh, the music right. that was playing in the yeah. video store like he had to compose everything yeah. he had to go like above and beyond the job of composing and scoring a film yeah. uh, and he did it I mean it's such a beautiful score mm -hmm. And it's so original and it just matches the film in such an incredible way. It just was a really fun working relationship. And I remember, like, I was always, like, very practical because mm -hmm. I'm not musical. Mm -hmm. So I would be like, you know, I really need this thing right here that's very specific. Mm -hmm. And he would be like... And then he'd, like, go away and he'd make this amazing piece of music that was exactly what it needed to be in that moment. Um, but there were things about timing and stuff like that that I would I would speak to him about and we were able to get exactly what we needed, what mm -hmm. both of us needed from it, uh -huh. which was really a good dynamic. Um, and I remember I said to him at one point, like after he had done the whole movie and it was yeah. like he was really, I mean, we were all kind of exhausted. Yeah. And I was like, you know, 
I really need a song for the end credits. So can uh -huh. you, do you have one that would work or do you have one that you want to compose? Yeah. And um, at the time, the cleaning, my cleaning lady wasn't around. Uh -huh. She had been like sick for two weeks and I was like, oh, you know, he came in and I was like talking to him about what I needed from the credits. But uh -huh. I was like, listen, you know, my, my cleaning lady is not here and it's stressing me out. <laughs> like everything is a mess. Uh -huh. And he went away. Uh -huh. And he came back and he composed the song that's the end credit song, which is called The Mess. The Mess, uh -huh. And it's about, like, not only, like, me, Jared, the film, that specific day, yeah. the characters in the film, yeah. you know, our journey in, the, in this whole journey of, like, making this music, like, of him making the music for the film together. It's about all of those things, but it's also a beautiful song in itself mm -hmm. that's just about... The, like what it's about when yeah. you listen to it. So it's really like amazing the stuff that can come out of artists when you give them a space to work. Yeah. That's what was like a shock to me. So did you say anything when he first started? Did you say I want it to be like this or that? Yeah, I gave him examples? all I gave him very specific I gave him very specific things in the mm -hmm. same way as like I would give <clears throat> any other artist who was working on it, like the mm -hmm. production designer or the costume designer or Andre or one of the actors, mm -hmm. like I was giving him specifics about the story and giving mm -hmm. him as much as I possibly could about the journey of the tale and what the mm -hmm. point of the tale was, you know, because I felt like that over me being able to talk to him musically, mm -hmm. I felt like that was going to bring out in him musically what the film needed. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I'm tone deaf and I have like problems. <laughs> I've heard you sing a song. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at karaoke actually. Yeah. But that's because I've done it. Like, she gets at the Leonard Cohen song. <laughs> yeah. She sings I'm Your Man pretty well. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I do sing that really well. I mean, so I am musical. I'm just not Jared, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not that level of like yeah. genius brain yeah. with music. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I would tell him stuff, you know, I would tell him songs that I liked, or I would tell him stuff that I thought it was like, you mm -hmm. know, like a song I thought this moment might be like. Mm -hmm. Or a moment in a song that I thought was good for this moment, but I, I, yeah, I think that it was, it was definitely, um, I was definitely surprised and pleased with his work in the film. Yeah. Like I just was like, this guy's next level, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that it's now on iTunes and all that stuff is so oh, brilliant. That's amazing. It's just amazing, and we all got to go to Sundance as well, which was really really cool. Yeah. It makes me so happy that that happens, yeah. that we all got to like have dinner together. That's so nice. It's very fun. Um, the woman in, in, in Good Dick is very, she's very, uh, she spends most of the story trying to drive the man away. Yeah. And doing it, you know, in whichever way that she can. Mm -hmm. Were you concerned at all about whether or not people would embrace her? Because she was pushing so hard yeah. against a very, very warm character, the yeah. man. Yeah. Um, did, did, did you think about that? Did it concern you? Did you just trust, you know, that the process um, of the story had, you know, would play itself out as it should? Did you think about that at all? Yeah. Well, it's an interesting question. I don't know that I thought about it early on, uh -huh. but it became something that I had to think about because... Mm -hmm. There are moments where she's doing this, yeah. like, go away, come here. Mm -hmm. And then there's moments where she's just like, go away. Yeah, yeah. And when she's doing go away, she can't just be like, sort of go away. She yeah, has to be like, go away. Yeah. Because that's like her, the condition that she's in, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't want her condition or like the place that she was to mm -hmm. be unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, but I also didn't want her to have like a blow dry and a push up bra and be like <laughs> smiling and like eating popcorn, watching films with him, yeah. you know, laughing at his jokes, <laughs> <laughs> even though they're really funny. Yeah. Like, I just was like, this is not, yeah. you know, she's not a normal character by any yeah. means, and neither is his character. No. So they're both kind of like these odd people, yeah. these original people. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to make sure that they stayed odd and that they weren't like too, that just that they weren't fake. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that by going full force with all of the moments, mm -hmm. the moments where it's very, very beautiful between them mm -hmm. are very, very beautiful. And mm -hmm. then the moments where it's very difficult, those are very difficult moments. Mm -hmm. So I think having both of those fully realized was then wonderful because 
within the cutting room I could sort of make a sort of version of mm -hmm. you know there would there would have been a way to make the version where she's this awful person and there mm -hmm. would have been a way to make the version where she's just this very simple mm -hmm. sweet girl mm -hmm. um, and I think that she's both so we kind of I was able to sort of cut it so yeah. that within the colors of what I was talking about earlier having had the like having having given the performance and having gotten the performance from Jason, both of which were like two re really complex performances, I mm -hmm. think we were able to like cut together something that seems re really realistic. Yeah. Even though that's what was in the script anyway. Yeah. It's just like, you know, think, making sure that it wasn't like too negative. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a song, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that the moments that are negative are sort of okay, like they're balanced by the reasons why he would stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah.